This is getting kinky. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today, we're exploring the 128th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 16th episode of Season 3, titled I'm Dreaming of a White Ranger. Welcome to Christmas, everyone! We start at the Youth Center, where Aisha is directing a bunch of kids singing while Kimberly plays along on the guitar. They're singing We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and we see that there are a surprising amount of extras here doing activities and whatnot. The kids are done singing, and we see that the four other rangers walk up. Billy mentions that this is for underprivileged kids so that they can have a place to spend Christmas. Ernie then comes up giving Tommy the star to go on top of the Christmas tree because he's the star of the show, and he sees a young girl sitting alone clearly depressed. Then Tommy looks sad like he's upset that he had to do what he's about to because he should be the one to put the star up. Seriously, his face says like, oh man, this little bitch is about to steal my thunder, I just know it. He walks over talking to the girl. She says she can't reach up to the top of the tree, and Tommy says it's no problem, and he lifts her up, helping her put the star on the tree. Meanwhile, Kim is sad because it's the first Christmas she's ever spent without her mom, and Aisha understands. Also, Kim says that she's really grateful for Aisha and Tommy, which makes me laugh because she acts as if she doesn't like anyone else. Aisha tells her that it's going to be okay, walking away with her before Bulk and Skull come in while Skull is screaming a Christmas carol. Bulk is in a bad mood because he has to play Santa Claus for a bunch of drooling children. Tommy helps Kim put up the mistletoe, and just as they're about to kiss, Bulk and Skull walk through, with Skull kissing Kim on the cheek. Can you tell these episodes were aired out of the originally intended order? Then Bulk looks like he's having trouble deciding whether or not he wants to kiss Tommy, but then he just leaves. On the moon, Zed is pissed about Christmas because he's basically a Scrooge. Rita tells him to shut up because he says it every year, and Zed has a good point. She has no idea since they've only been married a year. Then Zed shows his toy that he wants to be given to the children of the world via Santa. The evil Hypnospin. Yeah, Zed is literally starting a war on Christmas with an evil dreidel. Was there no one in the writer's room that thought this was an absolutely terrible, potentially anti-Semitic idea? Zed sends Rito down to the North Pole with the toy to make the elves start working on them right away before he shakes his head at the camera. Weird. Meanwhile, the children are singing Oh Hanukkah, and we see that that girl is still sad. And Aisha slyly tells her to stop being such a f***ing downer. They're done and all the kids leave. Also, they keep hugging Aisha, which makes no sense, but I think the real reason is that these kids were just really excited to meet an actor on Power Rangers, so they got a hug while they could. Turns out this girl who we're supposed to care about is named Becky, and Aisha asks her why she didn't want to sing. She then asks if she likes the song, which would be super problematic if she was like, no, I don't, because it's the most Jewish song ever. Instead, she explains that no one is going to be there to hear her sing, and she walks away. Meanwhile, in the North Pole, Santa and the elves are stressed about their toy production schedule. What is going on in this episode? Also, all these elves are being played by little people. That just feels wrong. Then, Rito shows up, letting Santa know that they're going to start making evil dreidels, and an elf who was only referred to as number one tries to stand up to Rito, but yeah, she backs down after Rito just yells a bit. Outside, Kimberly meets up with Becky, who explains that she's bummed because her dad won't be there to see her tonight to see her sing because he has work. I mean, that's legitimate, though. Kim explains that her dad only works so hard so that she can be happy. And she suggests that, you know, she just kind of let her dad know how she feels because he can't do anything without knowing. They go back inside, and they meet up with Tommy under the mistletoe, and just as they're about to kiss again, their communicators go off. All six meet up, teleporting out of there. In the command center, we're decorated for Christmas! I imagine Alpha got super bored one day, but let's be honest, this is not efficient whatsoever when it comes to pushing buttons and whatnot. Zordon tells them about Zed's evil toy, and Zordon says that it's unlike anything that they've ever seen. Thanks, Zordon. You're really just wiping out the whole Jewish tradition in a single sentence there, but okay. Alpha explains that there's an extra complication as well, before Zordon just hijacks the conversation to say that their Morphin powers won't work in the North Pole because of a cross-current of holiday magic. I mean, come on, this show has made up some really bad excuses before, but wow. Alpha can teleport them there, but they won't be able to defend themselves. Alpha then teleports them out, landing them outside of Santa's village. They sneak up to the main cabin, and they see that Rito is harassing the elves, and Santa is hogtied with tinsel and a bow. The rangers say that they have to think of something to stop him. Zed sees that they've arrived, and he tells Goldar to go down and handle this so that his plan doesn't get thwarted. Meanwhile, Bulk and Skull are about to eat donuts before Becky comes up, telling them that she can't find Kimberly. 
they don't think that she'd flake out before they just ignore her issue and then they just walk away so Bolt can dress up as Santa. As the North Pole, Billy suggests that since they don't have their powers, don't worry, the villain's powers won't work either. Which is fine logic, except for if you get impaled with a giant bone sword. Whatever, they have some sort of plan. In the workshop, Kim and Aisha have somehow snuck in, and Kim gets the attention of number one and beckons her to come run over to them. They tell her that they have a plan. Then Rito in a Santa hat sees Kim and Aisha, and he's led outside by them with tangos. Then Tommy comes out from behind a tree, and Rito tries to fire at them, but it just shorts out. That was pure luck, guys. Goldar then appears and are pummeled with snowballs by the rangers because this episode is lame as hell. Then Goldar and Rito and the Tangos get home alone by the elves by being tripped onto the ground and then tying them up. Alpha then teleports them out of there, but number one is still worried because they're now way behind schedule because, you know, they need a miracle to get everything done. Lily suggests that the rangers help Santa and the elves. This episode's so bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rita and Zed are screaming at one another about yet another failed plan. Then we see the rangers running around with the elves and Santa, loading up presents. Santa thanks the Power Rangers, saying that Christmas is saved thanks to them. He also still has Zed's toys, and he gives Tommy a special sack for the party. The rangers head out, and we see that Zed and Rita got their evil dreidels back. Also, Rito has gotten Goldar a present, and it's nice to see that Rito actually likes Goldar. We never see what it is, but it's still kind of nice. Volk is dressed as Santa in the youth center, and Skull as a reindeer brings him a child who starts to read off of a long list. Then the teens show up and they're handing out the presents. Kim walks over to Becky before saying that someone else is here for her, and Becky's dad is there, and he plans to spend more time with her. She's obviously happy, so she runs over to Santa slash Volk, sitting on his lap. She thanks him for bringing her dad home, and she kisses him on the cheek. This clearly melts Volk's heart while Skull cries. Finally, Kim and Tommy get to kiss for a second time ever. Then Kim's mom and a French painter husband come in, and she says that they took a last minute flight from France. Don't think that's a thing, but okay. The children sing Holy Night with Aisha directing them, and we get a really long shot of just Becky singing. Also, Kim is playing the guitar, but there's literally no guitar in this song. What is she doing? We also get awkward shots of pretty much everyone's face before they break the fourth wall, yelling Merry Christmas at the audience via the TV screen. Over the credits, we see number one explain to Rito how holiday spirit exists or something. I don't know, whatever. This episode is a cringeworthy classic. Seriously, I almost always watch this episode every December because it's so bad. It's a very unique episode of Power Rangers, especially in this particular era of the show, because there's no Japanese footage and no one even morphs. In fact, there's not a whole lot that happened during this episode at all, but, you know, it's still entertainingly bad a bit. There's a lot of weird trivia to discuss with this episode as well. Firstly, it was originally released as a VHS exclusive episode in September of 1995. Timely, I know. It wouldn't air on TV until November, but what's even weirder is that the VHS, which was released around the same time as like the Ninja Quest Part 3 was airing, includes a spoilerific deleted scene in it. Just before the rangers are teleported to the North Pole by Alpha, Zoran tells them that they have a message from someone special in the viewing globe. An unnamed girl who apologizes that she can't be with them because she's at home visiting her family in Australia. Who is she? <laughs> well, stick around until next episode where we actually meet her, but honestly, this scene makes the placement of this episode really hard. It's impossible to tell who this girl is to the rangers or why certain people are even around during this episode. It's just weird overall. Other than that, let's not also skip over the fact that there's also an outtake of Jason David Frank, the actor who plays Tommy, who apparently hung up the mistletoe in one of the scenes and Kim said, Tommy, look at it. And he said, oh yeah. And then he just dropped his pants. Apparently Amy Jo Johnson laughed really hard at this, but let's be real, we're never going to see that outtake ever surface. So as I said, next episode introduces someone new, but who is she exactly? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you.